open that tiddler by clicking on the down arrow, the little tool um, next to the X. Yep. And click edit. Ah. So what it's doing is it's actually putting the text of two different tiddlers into your tiddler. One is called Critique 2 and the other is called Reviewer. Oh, I called Critique 1, but I didn't build it for that. Okay. So if you grab the name of Critique 2, Jay Freiberg, just grab that with your, um, on the left there. Oh, right here. Yep, just grab the whole, not the braces, just the name of the tiddler. No, just the name of the first tiddler. Yeah. Okay. Copy that. Okay. The next out of this tiddler, you can save it if you want, but nothing, you can't obviously write back over mine. You can just write in your own version. And then okay. search for that tiddler. I'm sorry, say that again? Yeah, open up the menu bar and search for that tiddler. Um, it's up on the menu bar on top. Yeah. yeah there it is. Yeah. I'll move this over a little bit. I have two matches. Yeah. And so let's edit this tiddler. Okay. Oh, I'll move the window again here. And so then that's how we generate that tiddler. Ah, okay. And it's notice the last thing is list links, filter, tag, title. So that yes. all those those tiddlers, the links there are all the things that are tagged with your name and critique too. So it's kind of cool. It's a little database. Yeah, know? yeah, it's neat. And it's, it's neat. very, it's, it's, TiddlyWiki is quite a, um, it's a blend between writing and reading and hypertext, but then it also, if you're interested, it gets you, it pulls you into sort of a um, um, writing light code. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely a code feel to this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it's yeah. kind of cool. So I teach this in my um, in IDT 575, which I think we'll offer in the spring called Designing and Writing Interactive Texts. So, oh, I think that was offered last spring. Yeah. What's that? I think that was offered last spring, wasn't it? It was, yeah. yeah. Um, and I also run an open, pretty much an open studio. So any student who wants to do it in like the fall, who wants to learn TiddlyWiki can enroll in an independent study and I have a whole series of exercises and trainings. And the reason I'm showing you this is because I'm going to share this video with the 585 class and I never miss an opportunity to do a commercial for TiddlyWiki. Sure. <laughs> no, that's um, great. Yeah, and you can you can save this. If you click that red button. Where click the, oh, the red button. The save button. This one right here. Yeah, it's going to save it, but it's going to say, huh, where do you, where do you want to save this? I, I'm, I'm not, you know. It saved it somewhere, so, but it's not really saved. So, yeah, this is a local copy. Yeah, so just it's just not it's just like to get it to actually so that you can write in it. It's a whole nother slightly different process, but it's pretty straightforward. So yeah, you don't have to worry about messing my stuff up. <laughs> so we can't hijack your uh, your syllabus and, uh, and no, uh, no, I don't think so. So anyway, that's kind of, so I think that that addressed your questions and I'm thanks it does. Um, it does. I for pointing you. that out. And um, yeah, and, and I like the Zoom, so we can do this whenever you want, um, especially yeah. today. Yeah, it just happened to be that I uh, woke up not feeling uh, 100%. So, yeah, so where do you work? Yeah. You've told me in the intro and I forget. Yeah, no problem. Um, I work at Linnell, L-E-N-E-L. -E We're a division of United Technologies Corporation. In fact, there is somebody else in 585 who works for a subdivision of UTC. So I found that interesting to um, cool. see. I can't remember who it is, though. Yeah. Um, what do you do? You're a technical writer. Yeah, I'm a technical writer. I've been there for about three years. So what we do at Linnell is we create um, software product that manages uh, access control for for buildings of all different sizes. So you know, you get your little badge and you swipe it in front of a yep. reader. You get in, but this this software uh, called OnGuard. If you go to linnell.com, you can you can read up on OnGuard. Does a lot more than just access control. It'll integrate with fire alarm systems, uh, security systems, HVAC. Uh -huh. Elevator control, uh, TV, you know, it does everything. And so what do you do for them? So uh, as a technical writer, I write and maintain a lot of the manuals that 
uh, support on guard and its different modules. What we're doing is it's a thick client application, so it gets installed on a workstation and it can be spread across the server. And, uh, now that I think about this and you're recording this, it probably shouldn't be. Well, um, this is a product that's been on the field for years and years and years. So it's you know it's an enterprise product. It, it can be. It can what be, do you guys write your documentation in? Primarily structured FrameMaker, unstructured FrameMaker, and then for like release notes, we use a uh, Word. And then from FrameMaker, we can export to uh, HTML for the online help. Yeah, we're trying to move away from that to go more. Um, dynamic with uh, XML and Ditto and stuff like that. That's okay, well there's my pitch. So, <laughs> um, the tiddlywiki approach, um, you could actually do all your documentation in that. Oh yeah, yeah, you, we could, we could. Um, and so as a project, you might, if you wanted to, you might take a slice of it and weakify it and just explore what would it mean to to maintain and write your documentation in a wiki instead of in structured framework. Um, things like tags, so that you can tag things, so that all the things that are relevant to where we are, you know, what the question is, you've got tags to things, which you probably don't have in structured framework, frame maker. And no, not, not the way we currently yeah. use And this imports and exports um, HTML, XML, XML's a little different, but it, it deals with JSON up. JSON. Do you guys oh. use JSON at all? Yeah, our developers uh, put all the text strings for the different uh, products in JSON files. That's yep. one format they use. Yep. So um, TiddlyWiki imports JSON quite nicely. So you're suggesting this could possibly be a thesis project, is what you were saying? Yes. Ah, I like that. Yeah. Um, and the way to start would be to to start with a small project, like an independent study. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm not gonna take our, we have one manual that's uh, almost 2,000 pages long. I wouldn't start with that one. <laughs> no. Not even maybe, well, maybe a small slice of that one, but. Uh, yeah. Exactly, you start with just like, because the um, the whole, th the whole, it's called hypertext, which is probably a word you've seen tossed around and not thought about what it means, but basically I define hypertext as um, multilinear text um, text used to mean a, a, uh, a, um, a corpus of material. So it could be words, could be images, could be videos, could be anything as a text. Um, and then multilinear, each object in the text, which could be an image, a paragraph, you know, something goes in a tiddler. Yeah. Um, and then all the tiddlers have these characteristics. What's cool about TiddlyWiki that's different is there's no back end. It's a single HTML file. Um, so oh. it's a single page app, so all of the code is included in the file. So there's no back end here. Yet oh, you're running the database, which is takes a little bit to get your head wrapped around that. Um, and so I, I've also got to imagine the file is pretty small in size then. Yeah, yeah. well, unless you embed images in it, which case it gets yeah. bigger. And yeah. so I typically run images outside the file, which breaks the single page app approach. But um, and the other thing that's really cool about this is that we're able to now export, use TiddlyWiki as a back end to an app. So you can put it in, in an iPhone app and download all the content and then use the app updating so that people can constantly update. And it's very easy to fix your documentation. You don't, there's actually no direct, that's actually a direction where we're currently exploring with some new products. Yeah. So, um, so if you've got an app in there, and th the problem with the documentation is, you know, it's like it's so many layers to to update something when you make yeah. a mistake, yeah. and this breaks down your chunks to very small pieces. So you only have to deal with that one piece, and everything else updates. So, like if you go to my syllabus, for example, I think if you hit home, there's a link to syllabus. Yep. Um, I think I left it in the home. Yeah. Um, there's a syllabus right down there on the bottom. Um, and I think if you edit this tiddler, you'll see that there's nothing in it. Uh, well, there's, I did leave some text in it, but scroll down and you'll see that the assignments, everything is based on, um, you have to scroll in the tiddler. Okay, yeah. 
Yeah, so everything is based on the technologies and the course projects. They're all in separate places. So I can go edit one little chunk and it all changes every time that piece is called. Yeah, like in a piece of software, if you guys changed A, it has to get populated to like places in the software. Yeah. And that we handle all through tagging and appropriate management because it, it, it kind of it makes your manual database sort of, but not really. So what was the name of that class you're going to be offering in the spring? That, that if it comes in the spring, it will be IDT 575, but if it's something you wanted to do in the fall, we do it as an independent study. Um, Okay, I'm taking the research methods class already in the fall, so that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's the yeah. last core class I need, so I probably should stick with that one, but uh, I've got, after that, I've got three um, open slots for electives, so yeah. maybe I'll look for this 575. Yep. And that's so, all on this tiddlywink, uh, tiddlywinks, <laughs> tiddlywiki? Yeah, if you go to a URL, I'll give it to you now, it's bit. Uh, you don't even need to take a class, you can do it whenever you want, bit. B-I-T. Dot do. Bit dot do. Looks like you've been there before. Slash. Um, maybe. <laughs> yeah, no, slash. Uh, design. Oh, yeah, because I have a link to 585. Design right. That's it. Yep. And. Um, That's cool. There we go. Oh. So you're welcome to um, work in the studio and join and. and it's probably not super self-explanatory, but I'll work on making that better. But this is a place that you can, I run it as an open class. So there's people from all over the world who occasionally submit things. Um, okay. And um, you're welcome to do it that way through an independent study or any class, but it's, it would be intriguing to yeah. look at this as a, as a way of, as a way of thinking. So my, my theory on hypertext is it really is a way of thinking and it changes the way we read, write and think. No, and then this would be a perfect tie-in uh, to, to work. Yeah. To try to link work with, with my graduate studies, uh, yeah. which I'm sure they would be very happy to, to see. <laughs> yeah, when they do, when we do that, we always peel something off that's not an official work project. So that when they decide, oh, well, we don't want you doing that anymore, they don't take away your thesis. So you say, well, I'm going to do something adjacent to work. And then if I do a demo and you guys love TiddlyWiki and they want to make a project, I'm always interested in looking for partners in the studio. So my, I haven't gotten any yet, but my idea is that someday folks will contribute, I don't know, five, ten, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year, you know, big chunks, little chunks. And what the studio would do is we'd provide support to different organizations who are looking to integrate hypertextual thinking potentially using TiddlyWiki into their workflow. Um, and so it's a way to sort of, it's not exactly consulting, but if they ever want to say, okay, oh, now we're ready, we'll do this manual, then either they do it on their own or we provide some additional help for them. But at least they get the opportunity to be a sponsor. So This is kind of the direction my manager wants us to go in when we start doing more web-based uh, applications. So yeah, I might have to set something up and she's out of the office right now, but uh in the I near think, future, we might have to set something up where the three of us can chat. Uh, that would be terrific. Yeah, um, that's yeah. So it would be cool. It's it's. I, yeah. I, um, there's others that do software work in it. Um, it is kind of a shell, and you know, it's got a full. You can style everything in CSS, like everything. Um, right. And so you don't even know that you're looking at TiddlyWiki after a while. Yeah. But as a writer. I think for software, it would be terrific. Like you, you, you change one word and it just populates everywhere. Oh yeah. And then you don't have to invest in a content management system, which is, it's super expensive and it's an IT nightmare. And, uh, you know, this sounds like it might be the, um, much less expensive workaround to a full fledged content management system in terms of how a content management system, you know, you can update in the database, your, your source text and just push it out to your web page, your, your data sheets, your, your manuals, whatever your outputs are, your help files. What you were just describing kind of sounds like it does that. Yes. Yeah. It, it has a potential and we need to, we need to build some of the infrastructure to support that. But then that infrastructure gets built to your specs. Um, 
and then, you know, and getting a collaborative workflow where you've got different people in the project who contribute and who write, and then there's a flow. It's like, okay, I got to edit this. That's all doable. Cool. So if I go back to that bit that do uh, 